Welcome, welcome. So today um, I just thought I quite fancied painting a bird. So I plucked this photo out of my Pixabay grab bag because I like the look of it. And um, then I thought I don't know what this bird is. So um, I, apparently I just googled it. It's a mangrove blue flycatcher. It's got a lovely blue head and wings and a lovely orange and yellow um, chest feathers and I thought yeah let's have a go at this so I've already done the drawing there we go actually I think I can put this on zoom no wrong zoom there we go and so I've outlined it a little heavier than I would normally just because it's going to be off camera and I've gone slightly lighter in areas where I'm going to lose edges so the back of the head and the, the front of the chest feathers and the side of the wing um, but there's enough down there that we can we know where we are and we know where to put things okay so let's go to the overhead let's just talk uh, through the palette before we start oh and the paper I'm using let's see if I can show you what this is I, I'm, it's, I haven't used much of this but I'm liking it 100% um, cotton paper Academy watercolour paper pad I think I got this through um, Amazon um, Bao Hong pure cotton watercolour paper, £140 of press. And it's it's nice paper, it reminds me a little bit of arches in that it's very, very absorbent, like a sponge. So I'm, I may struggle with that because uh, I did a painting yesterday and it was, I had, to, I had to put a lot of water and a lot of paint on. Okay, so that's the paper. Um, the palette, let's just go through the colours. So, I get my pointing brush. Uh, we've got Hansa Yellow Light, which is kind of a greenish yellow. Um, cadmium Lemon would, would be a good substitute for that. Cadmium Orange, which is, I call an optional colour, but I think in this one, I think we'll need it for those orange feathers. Uh, yellow Ochre, which I think we also might need a little bit of. Uh, vermilion, which we might need if we want to push those orange feathers a little more red. Permanent Rose, probably won't use that, although you never know. Burnt Sienna, we'll probably use that, both for um, making our darks and maybe the shadows in the feathers. Uh, this is Cobalt Turquoise, um, I think we definitely will need that, although I'm looking at the photo, the, uh, the feathers aren't that turquoise. Cobalt, we'll probably use. Um, Ultramarine also we'll probably use. Uh, Cerulean, maybe, we'll see. Uh, then we'll have black, which I don't know if we'll need, actually. We might do. And at the end is neutral tint, which I usually have Payne's Grey in here, but um, I don't have any, so it's got neutral tint. I haven't been using this very much because this neutral tint is uh, somewhat purple, and uh, Payne's Grey is, is much bluer, which I prefer. But anyway, that's the palette. And I've been playing around with brushes, but I've actually gone back... Let me just point this. Going back to my Skoda Reserva Sables. This is this is a travel brush, size ten, and it points very well. Holds a lot of water, and I've I've, I've kind of gone back to that one. But my other brushes, like the uh, silver black velvet, that's that's a good brush to use, and it's about a quarter of the price of this one. So. Okay, let's go back to, let's go to overhead actually, let's go here. All right, so let's, where shall we start? All right, well let's put in some of these oranges first. We're going to put in a light wash. I'm not going to do the green background, it's just going to be the bird and the branch. Um, so we've got this nice orange going in here, but I don't want to, I don't want to outline it. I don't want to fill in the lines. I want to put some colour down and then pull it out across the edges. I don't want to define define the edges with this colour. And it goes slightly yellower towards the bottom, doesn't it? Let's see what cat orange looks like. All right, a little bit of cat orange. It's one of my favourite colours, cadmium orange. And we need a bit of scrap paper. All right, now this, we could 
we could use, I'm going to just add in just a smidge, a tiny bit, a tiny bit of yellow ochre into this. I'm just looking at that colour. It's bright, but not super, super duper bright. All right, a little bit more water. Well, I don't want to go right down the bottom because it fades out. It goes a little more yellow, a little less chroma up there. So I'm just going to splash on. Yeah, I can see it's really soaking up that, that paint. I'm going to clean my brush, put some water on that, and then put the water around the edges. Go through that wing. And basically every, every stroke I take, I'm going back, cleaning my brush so there's clean water on it, just to soften up those edges. And if I get a few blossoms, I don't mind that out here. Don't want to go too far into the blue bits. Certainly not at the top of the head because that's bright blue. This bit under here is quite dark so we can probably afford to have a bit of... I'm going to put some colour in that branch just to tie things together. And a lot of water. I don't want hard edges. See this little piece of colour around here? If I let that dry it will draw the eye as it's a hard edge. And this is really just to get me going, get me started, get some colour down, take the white of that paper off, which is always the most, always the most terrifying thing. Let's put a bit more colour in there. Just looking back at the reference, I don't want it to go too dark too early. Pull that out a bit. And there's a lot of water in this, so it will dry a lot lighter. Get these soft bits of colour will show up. And I think it gives it gives the painting just a little more, a little more interest. A little bit more dark in there. Right, I'm gonna just as I go down, it goes slightly yellower. Put in a bit of yellow down here, maybe a little bit. I'm going to put some shadow across this. It's leaking into the branch, but I don't mind that. Right, and again, just these edges down the bottom. And it looks like there's no colour going on here, but when I take the tape off at the end, I should be quite surprised how much the pa paper has uh, changed colour. Well, there we go. That was easy. Right, let's put in some blue. And again, we don't want we don't want to paint inside the lines. Let me just clean this bit. Put you up there. I don't want too much leakage into the orange. A little bit is probably okay, but not too much. I'm going to start with some turquoise, but it's not quite that colour, is it? A little bit of cobalt just to bring it back a bit. And let's go at the top. I'm going to keep away from the eye. A little bit around the back of the head, going right through the edges. Put a little bit of softness, but that's keeping away from the eye. And I'm not really worrying about values here, apart from the fact of not being too dark. Just want to suggest the colour there. I like to think of this when you build it up and then we put in the next layer. It's like, it's like the bird appears out of the mist. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit down here, just straight through that tail. I know it's really quite dark down there, but I think uh, the local colour is blue. It just happens to be in shadow, so a little bit around it might might work well. And just dotting a few bits of colour 
I'm wondering whether I should put some orange up there. A lot of water, so this spreads out. With that beak. Okay. Right. Let's check the edges. I'm always checking my edges when I'm doing this. Because once it's dried, you'll have a devil of a time trying to trying to soften it up again. All right, okay. One last edge check. And then I'm going to just pause it for a bit and let it dry. I probably won't let it dry completely. Uh, partly because I kind of like it when it's just little bits of the wet, you get slight bleeding here and there. But mostly because I'm just very impatient. Okay. Well, well that's layer one. I'm wondering whether I should put some a little bit of dark just yeah i'm going to do that a little bit of ultramarine and a little bit of burnt sienna just a, a blue gray in there just a little bit of dark this is quite a sharp transition there so i may have to mop this up just a little bit and then on the tail maybe a little bit here i know that's not really blue and maybe just a little bit through these feet all right i'll keep my paper towel handy just for that edge there probably won't need to do much softening for this because all the paper's already wet um, okay I've got a slight hard edge around the eye there, but that's fine because it's so dark back there. I'll be covering that up. Ah, I know what I was going to do. Let's put on some colour for the branch. Now that colour there, it's kind of yellow, actually. It's yellow. Maybe you want to see yellow green. I'm just going to put a little bit of black in, which will just turn it a slight olive green. Just put some colour. Ooh, I'm not sure about that. Maybe a mistake. Never mind. There we go. Drying all the bits up. Now this will dry and it will dry back a lot lighter. So don't worry, as long as you haven't got any soft edges and you're not you're not way down the value scale. You should be okay. Right, okay, that's enough fussing, Michelle. All right, pick up the water at the bottom. I wring my brush out on a paper towel, and just drag it across the bottom and it'll soak up, soak up all the water. They call it a thirsty brush, which is pretty accurate. Okay, right, I'm gonna pop him on pause and then we'll come back and put in, put in the, the next layer. Okay, so it's not dry and dry, just testing it with the back of my finger, but I don't think he's going to bleed too much. Now at this point I'm always thinking, this is never going to work, thinking that right now, but I have to trust in the process and hopefully things will be okay, but who knows. All right. Let's move on. I'm moving to a slightly smaller brush. Should I do it? Actually, no, let's, let's keep with a big brush. Where should we start now? I think let's start with the beak. I'm going to put a wash of grey over the beak because it's light on top. There's some shadow underneath and towards the, the back of it. But let's put that shadow grey on him and I'm going to pull some of the colour out as well. Kind of a bluish 
Actually, that looks pretty neutral there. But let's make it slightly blue. Let's put some colour on the beak. I'm leading with my point of my brush. How far back does that go? I go quite the way back. Okay. I'm just cleaning the brush. Let me just make that a bit more viewable for you. Let me zoom in there. There we go. I quite like this diagonal view because you can you can see how the brush is being held and how the brush strokes are working. Okay. It could have gone a little darker with that, although it is quite light there. Just want to pull some colour out. Again, soften those edges around the I don't want it to look as though the beak has exploded. All right, now I'm not going to go in with my darkest darks on the head yet. I think we've got a bit more colour. That's faded out quite a lot. So let's go back to our turquoise, a bit of cobalt. A bit of cobalt. And just over the top of his head. It might bleed into the beak. That's okay, around the back. A little bit down here. And again, I'm going to place a couple of bits of colour. To soften a couple of edges. I think the back of that head doesn't really need to be defined all that much. There's some darks in there which we can just place. Let's put the colour over the bottom too. I'm going to darken this up later. But this will probably show through a little bit. Just leaving that eye. And it's going to look weird at this point, but that's fine. I just dry that brush. Just lightly soften, just dragging a damp brush. There's no colour on it over the edge, just to soften it ever so slightly. All right, let's go in and strengthen up this orange. I'm going to go back to the Cadmium orange, a little bit of yellow ochre. Mm. And this is still wet, so it's going to bleed, and I'm hoping it's going to bleed in a pleasing manner. A little bit of yellow just to modify that colour as we come down. I'm going to give a couple of gaps. Bit more yellow in there. Get a clean damp brush. Soften that edge. Just poke it into there. Bring that out a bit more. I don't want to go into the top of this wing because that's quite a sharp transition there. And again, looking around the edges. I mean, you could experiment with this. Leaving these light pieces with hard edges could be, could be a nice, could be a nice, uh, could be a nice effect. But I'm not going to experiment with that right now. Okay. And don't worry that it's looking terrible at this point. She says, if I say it often enough, I'll start to believe it myself. But that's even though it almost always works out in the moment, I never really, <laughs> never really believe it. I'm just going to put that back on the head. Let me know in the comments what view you think is useful. You can kind of see what's going on. And it looks very flat, which is fine. Just tell yourself it's fine at this point that it looks flat. We're just putting in the light, bright colours. And then when we go in the next layer with the darks, we can 
we can show some form right now. Again, I'm hoping this might bleed just a little bit. I'm hoping it's not going to be too. Too aggressive on the old bleeding. I'm going to leave that bit down there. Yeah, that's not too bad. Not to show that there's an edge there, but I don't want it to meld together so much you can't tell that there's an edge. A bit down here too. I might actually leave this as completely lost edge. Let's see how that works. A little bit of water out there just to encourage it a bit. Okay. Let's put some dark of this. Hmm, what should we do next? Yeah, let's put a little bit of dark of this tail and maybe a little bit dark. Let's do the dark of the tail. It's grey. This won't be the darkest dark. This won't be the final colour. Mixing up a mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine. But not, it's not your darkest dark. It's still moving around the palette there. As much as you can with a single stroke. I'm going to leave that bit, that little bit of paper showing through, and a clean brush. You can be quite aggressive with this. I'm going to pull that brush all the way through. Maybe just leave one little sharp edge. Again, just soften bits you've pulled out. And I think you can still see there's a tail there. You can be really quite aggressive with losing edges on, on these, on the lines that are very straight. We don't, our eyes just don't need very much to show it's there. Okay. All right. While I'm here, let's, let's, what else have we got? I think I'm going to do a little bit of branch, just the shadow underneath that branch, which is kind of, it's a brown, but it's not burnt sienna brown, it's too bright, a bit of ultramarine, just to make brownish grey in there. All right, that's the, I can see kind of oranges in there and all sorts. Place a few bits of colour, it's just going to bleed a bit, but I think that will be okay. Leave some gaps. Wash my brush and pull that brush. It's just got water on it over that top edge. Okay, that's bleeding quite a lot. I now need to make a decision. Do I tidy that up? Or do I? Do I go in and mop some up? Just going to let it bleed for a bit and then I'll come back and see what we're looking like. Clean brush, just pull it and just pulling it over that edge. It could have been a little darker up there, but never mind. Hmm. Right, I'm going to just, I like a little bit of bleeding. That might be too much. That's gone kind of weird. Right, just a bit of mopping up with some paper towel. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna put a bit I'm gonna probably glaze over that branch. Slightly a greenish, greenish grey up there. Alright, well what else? Something on those feet and legs. And this again is not gonna be the final final layer and we'll go to a slightly smaller brush for this okay and again let's look at them and they're kind of mottled aren't they so they're not as dark 
Uh, I'm, I'm squinting, I'm squinting at the reference. They are darker than this, but they're not super, super dark. If you look at the contrast between the, the left hand claws, talons, and the dark wing behind it, there's quite a value difference there. So it's not, it's not super dark. So that colour, is it a brownish grey? See, these colours are hard to, hard to identify. Alright, just a little bit of colour up us here. And I'm trying to paint these all as one shape. I know they've got separate claws and talons. I'm painting them all as one shape. Not too much detail in the legs. Ooh, that might be too much. <laughs> too much value, maybe. And I'm going to just put a brush underneath where the shadows will be. Just pull through it a little bit. Hmm, maybe not. Okay, all right, let's go back up to the Let's go back up to the top of the head. Let's put them. Let's see. We're going to do the beak and we're going to do the eye. Now, this is make or break time. This is when you start to know whether what you've done is actually working. All right. So, beak. Again, a grey made out of Archerina burnt sienna. I'm using less water now. It's not moving around the palette at all. I'm sure that's going to be dark enough. Uh, it's shadow underneath. There's a little bit of shadow up here. Now, when you put it on, it always looks Dark. I'll just lose a couple of edges through the middle. That's better. Well, that, that first wash was too light, but I can't, I can't do it right now. Right, a very dark blue around this eye. I'm thinking this is going to be tricky. I'm just going to put in a smidge of black just to take that value down. If I put in ultramarine, it'll take the grey, and I want to keep the blue in there. Now, this is wet here. Let's paint around the eye. Does that go around the eye? This is not, this brush is coming to the end of its life, it's not pointing well. Comes over the edge. And round underneath. I'm hoping this is keeping, the paint is keeping wet. Laying down brush, not very wet this brush, so I don't want it to bleed out too much. Can need a bit more on that. I think that I didn't really didn't do what I wanted it to do. Didn't do what it wanted it to do. Muss up the back of that head. All right, let's get a bit more aggressive with this. Ultra rain, a bit of black. Still want its readers blue. Okay. 
do you want it to be dark? This paper stays wet for quite a while, so... You can drop colour in quite a while. I'm just looking back and forth. This is too wet up here. Yes, it is. Just a little bit of dark there. Just as it's turning over from the head to the wing. We'll just define that little corner. Right. Okay, that's not horrendously bad. Let's put in some colour inside for the eye. Now you could use, it is very dark, it is almost black in there. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to mix a very dark colour with my ultramarine and my burnt sienna. Now I'm hoping this brush will behave itself. Because I want to leave the highlight and there's also a ring around the eye that will remain white for now. Let me see, that highlight's quite complicated. I won't make it quite so complicated, I don't think. It comes around the edge. You've got to be careful here. Right, now the white bit will look too white. Let me just zoom in on that for you. The white bit looks too white, but that's fine. We can glaze over that when it's dried. And I'll just take the starkness out of it. But I think we're, we're, we're starting to get something. We're starting to get something. Ew. Now I've got this bleed here. I'm in two minds of to. I think I'm going to leave it. I quite like it quite like it. Now if that bit is dry, can I just touch up? No, not really. Okay, leave it. I haven't got, haven't got time for that right now. Okay, let's go down. Let's do this right hand bit of wing. And now the head is done and it's looking fairly okay. Okay, we need some more modulation of values in there but we're looking fairly okay I might use a bit of turquoise in there just to shift that blue around to a slightly greener blue All right now it's dark where it meets the chest feathers it's placing bits of colour and if we place bits of colour in the angles and then quite loose and just use water to join the bits together in the middle you can usually get it to read okay now do I leave that edge harsh like that or do I soften it hmm I don't know if I want to go into into the into the orange bit too much. I might just this is a clean brush. Just let it travel in a little bit just to take the harsh off that harsh off that blue. See I'm kinda of, kinda of liking it. Kinda of liking it. I'm I'm this is a very dangerous moment I always find because you start off and you think, well this is never gonna work. Then you get to a point and it's going, oh, no, that's not so I quite like that. I quite like that. And you get overconfident and everything goes terribly wrong. Right, let's do this left hand wing. I'm going back to my bigger brush for this. And again, this nice cobalt, too much water, a bit of black, a little bit of turquoise. I probably need to, and again, I've got to make a decision. Which edges do we keep crisp, and which edges do we make soft? 
here. I'm going to leave this bit in here. Now it's light, light, light. It's a bit of dark. It's another bit of dark there. Squint, squint, squint. All right, let's try that. I'm not judging what it looks like until I've softened the edges because it will look terrible when the bits of paint go down. Just smoosh across that. Uh, maybe, maybe. Do I want to lose any of this? I don't want it to be, it's looking a little too crisp. I don't want it to look crisp. The edges of this bird are quite harsh, so we can lose quite a lot of edges. I always find it quite interesting how few edges you actually need to make it read well. Now, this transition here looks a little harsh. But we've got a shadow in here which we haven't done yet, so I'm going to actually we should do that now. Let's do that now. Let me just rearrange things a little bit. No, oh, no. All right, now the colour is going to be a brown. I'm going to say quite a low chroma brown. It's a little bit of burnt sienna. And if I squint at that, actually, the value difference between the shadow in there and the wing, you can hardly see that edge at all. So this could be a terrible mistake. Let's have a go at this. And that comes here. Placing the paint. Washing the brush and then softening those edges, just being a little careful not to. It's a little bit of light just where that tail begins. That might be a little too much. Do -do -do. Now that's quite. A hot shadow just up here. I'm going to put that in. I'm going to use a little bit of vermilion. Uh, I'll take it. Comes down a little bit. Often I would leave these bits to the end. But I think in this case, I might need to do it now. Lose that edge a little bit. Okay. Now there's this dark bit in here actually, and I think that we need that to balance everything else. All right, so ultramarine. Mmm, I'm going to use a bit of, bit of, Better burnt sienna here because it's kind of grey in there, isn't it? And this will help to bring out the top of the foot. Now we've got some fluffy feathers down here. Let's see if we can get some fluffiness going on. About that, yeah, that and that helps a lot, doesn't it? Actually, that helps a lot. All right. Okay. I'm just, I'm annoyed by this now. It's put a bit of it's put a bit of this sort of hot vermilion, burnt sienna, a little bit of cat orange. That bit, yeah, I think that's a bit more cat orange. Just here, just underneath the chin. Just place a little bit and just a few marks. 
Now place the paint. I'm washing my brush. I'm just softening the edges of it. Just want a little bit of value modulation in there. How's that looking? Oh, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. I'm just going to put a little bit just in the crack there. I think we'll have to come back in and up and down that blue piece, but it just gives it a bit of, bit of change. Okay, right. Well, I don't think I've ruined it yet. I mean, it's always time. It is always time. All right, get rid of that hard edge. Let's do a bit more tail back to the bigger brush. Now, the tail's not particularly important for this because it's just a tail. So, again, an ultramarine, a little bit of burnt sienna. Squinting at it. Where do I want them? A darkest dark just here. And let me just put it back onto the canvas zoom. When I'm putting this paint down, I'm putting I'm not I'm not painting with the tip, I'm putting the brush down and I'm smooshing those bristles right onto the right onto the paper using as much as much of the brush as I can muster. A little bit just around the bottom, just define that, and maybe a little bit here. Okay, and then wash my brush. Washy, washy, washy. And then these internal edges are very soft. Could probably lose that edge there. Again, just pull a little bit out into the background. I don't want this to be super, super well defined. It's one of these things you almost have to go too far a couple of times to figure out how it's looking. Now I'm going to put it back on overhead. There we go. How's that looking? I'm leaning back. I'm just squinting. It looks, it looks a bit... Of course, I don't have enough paint left. It's okay for now. We may come back and revisit that one. Right. Well, I'm kind of liking him at the moment. I'm just going to pop it on pause. I'm going to just let it dry. And then we'll come back and and finish him off. I don't think there's much more we need to do. Okay, I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, he's dried a bit. I'm actually kind of liking him. I'm wondering whether this I should have done a bit more. I quite like the simplicity of it. But anyway, let's put in some let's put in some touches. And these are just gonna be touches now, really. Um and you can still ruin it at this point, but I'm quietly confident that I with uh well, apart from one thing, we've uh, done all the difficult bits. Feet. Ah, bird feet. Got to be very careful with these, otherwise it looks like you've cut out bits of black paper and pasted them on. So you want to take the value of these, these, these feet down just a little bit. This leg is kind of dark up there. But I don't want it to be too too dark. So let's mix up a brownish grey, ultramarine, burnt sienna, a bit more burnt sienna. Okay, I've got to be careful here. I'm not going to draw them on in a big line. I'm, and I'm going to put this in. Let's put this on the zoom. Right, so he is quite dark up here when it comes out of the body. 
I'm not going to draw the whole thing. There's a little bit of dark down here, just where would this be an ankle? I don't know. Alright, I'm actually going to get another brush so I can keep the paint on my first brush, clean brush. Just I'm just putting water in between the two so the, the colours join up but they don't look too horrendously dark. Okay, and we just need a few darks. Pretty much just in the crevices. Wish this brush pointed a bit better. Where the foot hits the branch. I'm just looking at the reference and then keeping the hard edge at the top at the bottom never another keeping the hard edge at the bottom will that be enough i may want to soften it at the bottom yes that's okay Took me years to figure this out. Less is definitely more when it comes to bird feet. There's little dabs, dark, where you can see it goes into shadow, usually on the underside. Uh, what does it do down here? Maybe a little bit of dark there, <coughs> and then a clean brush. Just join them together. I know there's detail on these feet, but people don't care about the feet. The more detail you put on, the less convincing they are. That's the thing I've just about got away with that. I am going to put a wash over this branch as well, so that will help with things. Okay, all right. Well, what next? Let's put a glaze over this eye. You want to keep the highlight, but this little ring around it is slightly lighter, but not that much lighter. I want to use just a little bit of water with my foot colour. Just take the white paper off that. It'll help the highlight come out. It will make it look more eye-like. I'm actually thinking that highlight is too much. I'm going to do something. I, oh, I'm going to oh, let's see what it does. I'm going to do something I never usually do. I'm going to use pure black. This is just laziness, to be honest. I'm just going to take a bit out of that highlight. I think it's too big. Make it slightly smaller for this side. No, oh, I'm not sure that's worked. Anyway, we've done it now. And I think just a little more. Oh, we've got to wait that wait for that to dry. Put a little more dark around around this uh, around the eye. Now, other things. It's not. It's not a lot more I want to do. To be honest, just want to take the value of that tops bit of that beak down just a little bit these are really subtle things now just a little bit top wash my brush The white bit that I've lost there. Does that matter? I don't think it matters. Right, let's put a wash over this branch. It's really, it needs a bit more colour there. I'm hoping my feet have dried. Now this is, I think it's very yellow this. It's very, it's light, but it's yellow. So I'm going to use some of my hands of yellow or your cadmium lemon if you have that a little bit of black. But then, as the black will make it darker, a bit more water. Let's test that. A bit stronger, maybe slightly more orange. There's a bit of yellow ochre going in there. Wouldn't that be terrible? 
bit more black. So I'm using the black not to make it darker. I'm using the black and very little of it to take the brightness, the chroma out of the colour. People say you should never do this. But I find it works because you get the right colour. Okay, let's go. This is the point when my husband watches the videos. He goes, oh my God, what have you done? What's she doing? I never tell him that I often think that too. I don't know if anyone watched the French, the French Chateau video. They do a whole glaze over the whole building after having spent two hours doing all the little twiddly bits. It was a tricky moment, but it did work. Right, and I think that looks better, doesn't it? I'm just going to lose some edges on that top, I think. quite liked it when this one was lost. I know we've got graphite in there, but... So be it, maybe a bit here, just I'm just gonna put a bit more, I think we need a bit of the texture in that branch. I don't want it to be the no, no, yeah. This paper doesn't take spray at quite the same time that Fabriano Artistico does. Sorry, let's take a bit of my little brush, put a bit of splatter on some bits and bobs. I'm just trying to put a bit of variation of the colour in here. Splatter. I'm not trying to make a realistic branch here. Just trying to make it look roughly. Could have done the shadows a little better. Yeah, I think that's okay. I think that's okay. I'm just going to let it dry a little bit. Put this up, a bit of water down here. To, I do like the effect that the spray bottle has. The thing is, you have to get it exactly the right time. If you get it too early, all the spray does is just make it wetter. So you have to wait even longer to uh, to put water on. And I'm just putting my head down sideways, just watching for the sheen to go off, the shine to go off that. Right. I'm losing patience. What else can I do while I'm here? You know, I'm not sure there's much else to do. I'm, I'm really quite pleased with this. This up here, maybe. Oh, let's put some darks on that head. I don't think it needs much. It's nice and dark. It's nice and blue as well. I wanted it to be blue. Uh, cobalt. Let's use cobalt. Again, a little bit of black to take it darker. And uh, I'm squinting at it. It's actually darker under here than the beak, which is a good thing. Bring that back. Just to slightly define where that beak ends. It's going to be very subtle that. But... And a little bit up here, and there's a little bit down the side. And again, damp brush just pulling over that edge. What what you're really doing when you're doing this is you're you're not painting as such, you're just basically wetting the paper. And then the pigment that's already down and wet just flows into it. You've got to resist the temptation to start coaxing it around. I'm not saying I never do that because I do, but ideally, ideally you shouldn't. Just looking back, a bit more dark. Again, damp brush. 
just pulling across that edge. Oh yes, I think that's rather nice. Just a little, little shadow in there. Now this piece here, I'm not liking. It's slightly darker in there. I know there's, there's a little bit of light there. I'll take it down just slightly. It's just attracting the eye too much for me. Right, let's try this. Okay, sort of a million little cat orange, little burnt sienna. Now this is probably going to bleed. I think that's okay. Let's restate that a little bit. And the same thing again. I'm just basically wetting the paper round. Does that help? I think that's made it worse, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm just looking at this. Let me take the value off that. I want that to be slightly softer, I think. A little bit of yellow ochre, maybe. Yeah, it just takes the edge off a little bit. I could go around and start putting in little twiddly bits everywhere, and I'm trying to resist that, but... <laughs> I'm just going to put a little bit of colour here, just right in the crevice. And then clean brush, pulling across that edge, just to give it a little bit of, a little bit of intensity in there. Right now, I can feel that I'm getting to the point where I'm twiddling. I'm just looking at this wing. Does it need anything else? Got this stripe there, which I don't like. Let's, let's put a bit more, just a little bit more colour in there. And I'm just, I'm squinting again. That's actually a hard edge there. That's kind of soft. A little bit of colour just to join those two bits up. At this point, I'm, I'm using the reference as guidance. And just a little bit, slightly darker, just on the shoulder. I don't want to do too much. As I said before, I quite like that. I think I've no, that didn't work. Yeah. Okay. Okay, right, I'm gonna stand back. I never did get to do my splattering, did I? I'm gonna stand back and see. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. I could do a bit more with the branch, I think. Put some dry brush on it, maybe a few more subtle value changes and colour changes in there. But I'm I'm actually I'm kind, I'm kind of liking him and I'm getting to the point where I could ruin it at a moment's notice. Okay, let's just let's have a look. Just put him sideways. 
Yeah, I think he's looking nice. He's looking nice. Is there anything else? Right, this is going to be my very, very last thing. Oh, oh I might regret this. I'm going to, I'm just going to put a bit more, bit more colour just here. Just a couple of spots. Just to, it's almost undetectable, but very subtle, subtle value changes there. Okay, I think, I think I'm done. I'll put it back on the other hand. Put him on Zoom so you can get a close up. Yeah, I, I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Well, that was fun. I've never painted one of these before. I think I might. I might do him again. I might do him again and just go nuts with everything. Colours everywhere. I've stuck quite carefully yet. This bit's blue, this bit's orange. Um, but I might go nuts and start throwing cobalt or permanent rose in there. Okay, so there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, very happy to have people watching and if, if you like to leave comments it's always nice to read people's comments oh let me take the tape off let me take the tape off untaping is always a good thing to do then you can see it in context oops and you can see, even though that wash was, was really, you know, very, we thought it was very light, when you see it against the white paper, and you throw that colour in there, it's subtle, but it, it all, it all adds up to give a good effect. Yeah, nice. Very happy with that. Very happy with that. Okay. Well, thank you for watching. Um, please subscribe if you, if you want to see more. And also, actually, a quick plug, I should have done this earlier. Um, I'm running some online classes over Zoom uh, starting October the 12th and if you go to my website michellecrump.com and uh, go to the learn menu online classes uh, it's six weeks um, and we do a painting a week and some exercises and uh, I would love to see you I would love to see you okay well thank you again hope to see you next time